Welcome back to Awaken. Welcome if you're new. I'm Emma and I make videos on intentional living, minimalism and life organisation and planning. In this video, I'm excited to give you a complete tour of my minimalist kitchen. I'll show you inside every cupboard and show you how things used to look before I began my journey towards a more intentional and minimalist lifestyle a year ago. Decluttering and simplifying my home has given me a calm, relaxing space that's easy to keep clean and tidy, even with two kids, and save me time and money. If you're interested in hearing how you two can do these things, keep watching. So the kitchen could look its best, I've had a good clean out here. And whilst it's not always this clean because it's used every day for cooking, cleaning, laundry, crafts, homework, entertaining... I do have a place for everything so that when items aren't being used, they're out of sight and leave the room clutter free, which is how I like to live. The kitchen was fitted and decorated like this when I moved into this new build house almost two years ago. I haven't felt the need to redecorate because I love the white. I've just tried to keep it looking new by looking after it, keeping it clean and touching up the paintwork when it gets marked, which is quite often. I only display items that I love, only store in the cupboards what I need and will use. And on the worktops, I only have out items that I use several times a day to give me as much room for cooking and preparing food as possible and to allow for easy cleaning. So the space is very functional. I don't cook three times a day due to work and the kids being at school or in the dad's. And I wouldn't say cooking or baking are my hobbies. I actually like to keep meals quick and simple. But I do enjoy making a few dishes from scratch and I'm not afraid to try new things. I love the natural light out here due to the patio doors and the luxe windows. And I think the height of these and the big mirror on the wall make the room feel spacious. To keep the light flooding in but to provide some privacy I just have these foil panels. I did have curtains too, hence the double pole, but never drew them. And they were just something else to clean constantly. So I took them down. Spotlights under cabinet lighting, as well as the triple light above my dining table from Wayfair, give me a few different lighting options for different activities taking place in the kitchen area, as well as the fairy lights on the mirror, which just give us a cosy atmosphere at night. I have the table mainly set up for four, and we have most meals out here, although I can extend for up to six if I have guests over. I have a fifth chair in the corner there, and a sixth in the cupboard under the stairs in the hall. As you enter the house, your eyes are drawn directly down the hall to this area, so I do like to keep the table clear of any clutter. It does end up sometimes as a bit of a dumping ground, though. I just display a candle or vase of fresh flowers whenever I can which I love to do as I think they just make the space feel welcome and, and make me want to smile when I walk in. Onto the kitchen area, given its prominent place, I opted for this nice Brabantia bin, which I use for general waste, and I empty roughly every other day because I do recycle as well. On the wall, I have my Jones wall clock, a cute little shelf from Next, a fake plant, which you'll see a lot of because I'm not a great carer of plants, and some coasters for hot drinks. On the window ledge I have this gold letter E, which was given to me as a homewoman gift by a friend, as well as this lovely plant, which was just a small baby when I got it, and seems to be doing quite well out here, so we'll just see how it goes. Hopefully well. This Super Lamb Banana is a mini version of a collection of sculptures which were developed for an exhibition in Liverpool, which is my home city. And it's now very much a symbol of Liverpool. It's meaningful, but I think it also looks really cool. I have this small dispenser from Etsy for sanitizer and larger one for hand wash from TK Maxx. I try to keep the sink empty of dirty dishes by washing as I go and having a minimal amount of dishes in the first place. But the kids definitely like to challenge me on this. Keep me busy. I mostly hand wash my dishes, especially when it is just me and the kids. 
but when I have a few guests over or I do a lot of cooking and I have loads of dishes, it is handy to have this integrated dishwasher just here. I keep all of my dishwasher tablets and dishwashing supplies as well as my laundry supplies under the sink here. I don't have too many of them. This is really handy because I have an integrated washer dryer just here as well. Until my washing and laundry supplies are used up, any spares are stored in my cleaning cupboards at the back, as well as any spare cleaning supplies. In the front, I store cleaning supplies which are currently being used, so I can avoid having multiples of the same items on the go at once and just keep on top of things and reduce waste in this way. I have spare cleaning cloths down here, as well as some water jug filters at the very back. On the top shelf I have disposables like oven paper, foil, cling film, bin liners and sandwich bags. Try and get hold of biodegradable ones when I can, if they're not too expensive. And then I just have my iron and some clothes pegs for the washing line at the back. I will share with you in another video just how I get away with such minimal cleaning and household supplies. My boiler is built into this cupboard and I just store me vases cutlery drainer and some napkins in here. Up here is literally my entire pantry for tinned foods, dried pastas, rices, noodles and spices, herbs and seasoning. I never overfill this so I can see at a glance what I've got up here and I give it a clean out in seconds. I do these every week when I'm planning my meals and grocery shopping list. So check out my video on that if you're looking for ways to save money, waste and time in these areas. My oven and hob which is really easy to keep clean without all the grills and burners and my splash bath and extractor hood which definitely are not as easy to look after they get covered in dust and smudges so easily on top of the cupboards i used to store bulk buys which more often than not got forgotten about and then binned because they went out of date and appliances that are rarely used and everything would just get dusty and greasy because it was a big job to clear everything down. Now it takes me a couple of minutes once a week to wipe the tops over if I feel like it. I just have a couple of fake plants to add a bit of colour and this sign here which is true thanks to the Alexa down here. I do love to have a good sing and dance with the kids while I'm cooking and cleaning out here. In here above the kettle I store mugs and glassware. I have plenty in here for me and the kids and as many guests as I can comfortably sit in my living room. But I did easily used to have double this amount in here, literally stacked high. It wasn't great because the kids and myself included would just take a cup or a glass, then another and another without washing them, thinking nothing of it, then they'd be scattered all over the house. I'd open up the cupboard and wonder where they'd all gone when a guest came and I couldn't make them a drink. To solve this, I bought all of us our own water bottles, which we just refill when they're empty. So apart from maybe the odd coffee mug being used by me, most of these aren't really used day to day, especially the wine glasses because I don't drink. I just have them for guests. Everything in here except for mugs can be bought in singles from Ikea 
if they break and this has happened a few times but again it means I don't end up having to buy whole new sets or having odd items and I love an excuse to go to Ikea. These three drawers are the only ones I have in the entire kitchen. In the top drawer I store cutlery. I did think of reducing these but the extra items aren't taking up any space and it's a good job because I sometimes leave forks at work and Bella leaves spoons at school after taking them for a pack lunch so no doubt they'll naturally deplete over time. As with my glassware I can buy these in singles at Ikea if I need to so we don't have to go out and buy a complete set. We use reusable straws and I've got protective covers for the knives although the kids aren't little so I don't need to worry about them being able to get hold of these and misusing them at any time. Underneath I have all of my other utensils. I did used to have two or even three of some items such as spatulas and graters for some reason. So when I was decluttering I did get rid of all my multiples and naturally I haven't missed them. I've got clips for open packaging which help prevent items from going stale or falling out inside cupboards and making a mess. And this drawer is also the closest thing I have to a junk drawer, although I have found these little tubs really useful in keeping items separated and easy to find. I used to have two junk drawers in my previous house, but now that I have a place for everything, there's just no need for me to walk through the door and start throwing everything into this drawer. I have my kitchen towels and dusters in here, which are wash. In the bottom drawer I have pans and lids. I never use all of these at once and they all cover my cooking needs just fine. When I first moved in I had more items on the worktop over here such as a coffee maker which I cleaned more than I used because it just gathered dust so I sold it and a toaster which as you can imagine left me with little space to prepare meals and made cleaning the surfaces take longer so I now store it down underneath in the cupboard which is never a problem because it only takes a couple of seconds to get out and I only use it a couple of times a week. Same with the toasty maker, juicer and mini blender which sit down here with their accessories. I also have scales, bacon trays and tins in the corner. Above I have all of my crockery so dinner and side plates, bowls and serving where I did consider reducing the number of plates at one point but the ones I have are good quality and they're not taking up any additional space they come in handy when I cook for guests so I've hung on to them in this cabinet I just have lap trays for takeaways or snacking in the living room chopping boards, normally water flasks pack lunch bags and coffee flasks I used to spend so much on takeaway coffees when I was out and about but now I have the big cup which keeps drinks hot for hours and comes in handy if I know I'm going to be out a while and the smaller one for when I fancy a cup of there and then but need to head out. Both fit in my cup holder and in my car perfectly. I don't pride myself of coffee shop treats, I love them but now they are just a treat and not something I buy every day and I actually enjoy them more because of this. Down here I have mixing bowls, a colander, sieve, measuring jug, Tupperware for my meal leftovers which I often take to work for lunch. I make sure I only keep ones though with lids with no cracks in which sounds obvious but I used to have so many and I hadn't realised until I began decluttering that they weren't actually even usable. I have some plastic dishes for my niece, nephews and friends kids to save breakages. There's been a few. <laughs> These are my shopping bags. They're reusable. You can fit loads in them and they're really strong so will likely last years which saves me money and is good for the environment. I used to have a whole cupboard dedicated to plastic carrier bags at one point and every time I opened it they'd all just burst out. I had intended to use the reusable ones but would forget to take them out with me and just have to keep buying more. What's helped is keeping some reusables in the car at all times but my spares fit perfectly in this little tub which saves space and makes cleaning simple. The microwave mainly gets used for reheating food and making popcorn. Not all the time but enough to justify having it here. 
I love that it has a flat base and sides and not a ring and place because cleaning splashes is so much quicker and easier with this. The pestle and mortar and serving plates just look really nice but do get used too. I love it when decorative pieces can serve a purpose. The fruit bowl is filled because I went grocery shopping yesterday. The fresh fruit adds a bit of colour and interest so I think that's also like a decorative piece until a Sunday night when there's just one black banana in there. I have these here to encourage the kids and myself to eat more fruit and it does work better than having it away in the cupboard. When I did used to store it in there, I'd go in thinking, oh, I need something to eat. And as you can imagine, my eyes would be drawn straight onto the crisps and biscuits and yep, I'd have them instead. I still do sometimes, but I don't think about these other foods as much when the fruit sat on the side. When I'm preparing foods, I just put the fruit bowl on top of the microwave. Our little puppy Benny is very spoilt and has his own cupboard over here for his food and accessories. He learned very quickly that this is where his treats are kept so he gets excited every time any of us go near it. In here I keep my first aid kit and medicines and tablets as well as shoe polishing and sewing kit and any other useful items in here. The boxes on the right are all from Ikea and are really useful for DIY around the house. In my last house I stored things like this in my garage. But it seemed to be a big effort to dig them out and it led me to putting the odd jobs off. So easy access to these is definitely a good idea if you want to keep on top of your DIY or general maintenance. Also near to where I prepare drinks, I keep my tea, coffees, sugar, sweetener and some cordial. The kids only drink water really but I have these tiny bottles of squash which don't get in the way for guests. Condiments are stored up above in their own tub. And breakfast bits are stored up here, like cereals and porridges. Cereal bars and crackers are stored in these two tubs. And then underneath we have crisps, biscuits and sweets. On the bottom we have bakery items. I take the outer packaging off items when I'm unpacking my shopping to save space and so I can see how much I have left and storing like this makes cleaning really easy. I've also talked more about this in my meal and grocery list planning video so check that out. On to my integrated fridge freezer. Starting with the fridge, this has quite a bit in at the minute because I've recently been shopping but by Sunday it'll look pretty empty because I aim to use everything up before my Monday grocery shop. It takes me seconds to clean this out and take note of what needs using up. When I come to do my meal planning and grocery list, saving me time and less chance of items going out of date and having to be binned, something that also helps with this is preparing some vegetables like peppers and cucumber sticks and washing grapes before storing them in these airtight containers which are from B&M. This way I can grab them as a quick snack without thinking that I can't be bothered washing and chopping them or that I don't have time and then reaching for a chocolate bar which I still do. This water jug is literally one of the best things that I have bought. The filters cost me about £20 for six but six will last a year. The jug again cost about £20 but before I bought it I was buying four to six crates of spring water a month from Costco. So I was spending a lot more and filling my recycle bin weekly. The water tastes so much nicer after being filtered. Even the kids notice. They like to drink water more than anything else. And you get less lime scale in your kettle if you use filtered water. I definitely recommend having one of these water jugs and some water bottles. 
my freezer just has three small drawers so i don't buy much for it mainly frozen veg and convenient foods for when i don't feel like cooking My Brabantia washing basket is the only one that I have in the house so I don't have to go searching as much for dirty washing because yes, I do still need to mark the kids to bring it downstairs otherwise it ends up piled up behind the bedroom doors. The small bin is used for recyclables, I just empty it into the big one outside whenever I'm on my way out and having the small bin encourages us to flatten packaging and saves room in the big recycle bin outside. My puppy Benny normally follows me everywhere so when I'm out here he stays in his bed out here but he's asleep at the minute in the living room. My notice board which is basically used to display Bella's artwork is the nicest and brightest thing in the room and makes me smile more than anything else in here. And that's my kitchen tour all done guys. Whether you go out to work every day or stay at home with the kids, you work equally as hard and deserve to have a peaceful, clean and organised home where you can relax. Having less physical items to look after and maintain has definitely helped me to create this for myself and my family. So hopefully this video has inspired you to have a think about whether you actually need all of the items in your kitchen which cost you money and time and if not, encourage you to let go of them so you can benefit in the ways I have. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Let me know by giving me a like or by sharing your thoughts in the comments. Hit the bell and subscribe button for more content like this. And I'm planning an intentional living. Thanks for watching guys. Bye for now.